Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our national Q&A call. It is the 5th of August, 2021, 4.32 p.m. Pacific, 7.32 p.m. Eastern. I am doing this thing on audio only today because I am stuck in Northern California dodging traffic on our wonderful interstate that's being ready to be doubled in size. So um, I don't want to be watching the, the screen while trying to watch the big trucks around me and in front of me same time however we do have uh, some some interesting news you can use today i've been asked by several of you to kind of unpack the uh, eviction ban the eviction moratorium and, and what has happened since last week uh, probably the best way to do this is to go back and kind of rewind the tape a little bit and talk a little bit about how this thing came into existence so last september september 2020 the centers for disease control uh, now, this was after a number of other attempts to, to effectuate an eviction moratorium. The Centers for Disease Control decided in their power they could unilaterally affect a moratorium by claiming that it was a public health hazard. In other words, because of COVID, it would require that we keep people in houses and not allow them to leave because there'd be more infection. So obviously now, since then, uh, the, the infection rate has gone down, although currently it's going up because of this Delta variant. But, you know, over the last four or five months, and really since the, the first quarter of this year, when we've had an effective vaccination policy, um, the, the overall rate, especially the death rate, has gone down dramatically. So CDC wanted to continue to keep in effect this eviction moratorium, more as a public policy thing than you know, a real response to the COVID deal. So in May, uh, a group of landlord associations, along with some realtors, um, sued in federal court the Centers for Disease Control under the grounds that the moratorium was unconstitutional. And in this particular federal court, and I think it was Alabama, uh, they were proved correct. In other words, the federal court judge said, this is illegal per the constitution it is not something that the cdc or even the administration didn't matter whether it's the trump or the biden administration it's not something that the administration can just say wave their hand and say this is our new policy because it was clearly unconstitutional of course the current administration decided to fight that ruling went to the supreme court and immediately got clobbered supreme court in their majority ruling uh, by judge brett kavanaugh said the underlying, the district court judge, judge was correct, and it is clearly unconstitutional. And Kavanaugh said, short of a new law being passed by Congress, this thing is unconstitutional and has to unwind. Now, they entered into some type of a consent decree, which said, if you don't fight it, in other words, administration, you don't fight this overturning of the eviction ban, we'll let it expire naturally on July 31st, 2021, which it did. Uh, five, six days ago. Tuesday, day before yesterday, the, uh, now I should actually back up and tell you a little bit more. Before that ban, the last week or so of July, Congress, under the progressive uh, leadership, in other words, the Democratic leadership of Congress, tried to pass a bill that would actually be effectively a de facto law extending the eviction ban. It did not pass. It was overwhelmingly defeated, both by the progressive and the conservative wing, in other words, the Democrats and the Republicans, primarily because the majority of the PAC money that comes into both the Democrats and Republicans comes from people who have a real estate background, i.e. the landlords. So it was soundly defeated. And because of that, the ban on evictions through the CDC expired uh, last Saturday night at midnight, 31st of July. Now, two days ago, um, under pressure from the Biden administration, the CDC issued a new uh, law, a new order, uh, reconstituting, reinventing the eviction ban, reinventing the eviction ban under uh, basically saying the same kind of thing that they had said a year ago which was there's high transmission rates. So in counties, only where there's high transmission rates, and they defined it as about 85% of the counties and about 90% of the population in the U.S. would have an eviction ban till October. 
So immediately yesterday, the, the same group that filed the original lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of the eviction ban filed in the same court in Alabama with the same judge. And uh, it was initially heard this morning. The judge gave the Biden administration till nine o'clock Eastern tomorrow morning to basically, uh, it's like an OSC hearing, order to show cause. In other words, why are you clearly violating the constitutional law? The Supreme Court has ruled, and this is a clear violation. If you have some law, bring it to us. If not, we can find you in contempt. Now, what I haven't seen yet, but I've heard through friends of mine, is the contempt order is for a billion to $2 billion a day to be paid out by the federal government to these landlord associations to mitigate the permanent damage that they're causing by trying to illegally uh, reconstituting this uh, eviction ban. So by probably 10 or 11 tomorrow morning, we'll know the court's ruling. I would expect it to go in favor of what the court has indicated right now, which they will hold the government in contempt of the Supreme Court ruling, constitutionality of this law. And then I would expect that the Biden administration tries to run that up the flagpole to the Supreme Court, which is prepared to take it on an emergency basis, just like this court did. Um, if the administration loses, it's going to be a huge, huge windfall for, not a windfall per se, because a lot of money has been lost, but it'd be a huge victory for the landlord association and the realtor associations across the country a big loss for the advocates of continued free housing for those who aren't making payments. So we'll see what happens. Um, you know, it could cost the government a huge amount of money, much more than the COVID thing has cost. Um, and it will, right now it's kind of up in the air, but I don't believe that you're going to see that this new thing that's clearly, in fact, the, the uh, proponents of this, the guys who filed the Supreme Court argument yesterday said this is clearly a politically motivated action by the CDC designed to basically circumvent the laws, circumvent the Constitution, and to essentially abdicate for or advocate for uh, their constituency, which is kind of the ultra progressive wing of the Democratic Party. So we're going to see what happens. I think these guys are going to get their head handed to them on a plate tomorrow, uh, but we will see. So that is the latest. Um, and as I mentioned, I think last week, expect uh, more challenges to come, but I don't think they'll prevail because the Supreme Court has settled this law already and has made it very clear that a new law, uh, duly constituted by the Congress of the United States, signed by both parties and the President of the United States, is the only way that they're going to be able to reenact this ban. So we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, I... I I've heard over the years of, you know, the executive branch of the government trying to overrule the judiciary, in other words, the Supreme Court and things that were clearly unconstitutional, they would try and fight it. Uh, this is the first time I've actually seen the sausage being made and it's not a pretty sight. It's, uh, it's very interesting what these various branches of the government will do to overrule each other. But at the end of the day, I think the constitution and those who are charged with protecting the Constitution, in other words, the Supreme Court of the United States, will prevail. So we will see what happens. Uh, if I get updates by the time we get tomorrow's call, I'll let you know. If not, we'll have an update on Tuesday for everybody. All right, that's news you can use for today.